Hello, thanks very much for joining me today. Uh, I'm going to tackle the Midas Dry Fly. Um, I believe it's credited to Paul Davidson, who um, created the pattern a number of years ago and has used it to great success ever since. It's uh, a competition circuit favourite. So, without further ado, I have in the vise a Hanak H270 barbless hook. It's in size 10 and it's a medium wire hook. And the thread I'm going to use today is the Beavis. It's E04 at A2 and it's a red thread. So, the first thing I'm going to do is get plenty of wax onto my thread. And just start a couple of millimetres back from the eye and get a bed of thread down. Now I can see I've got plenty of wax on this and it does help in the long run. Now you'll notice I've not stopped, I'm going right around to nearly halfway down the bend and I'm going to remove my rag end. Okay the rib on this fly um, I'm not sure what Paul uses, but it's it's just tippet material really. I'm using uh, some real Fluoroflex Plus. It's the very tail end of a spool, actually. I, I, I never use the tail end of spools. I always find they can be quite weak and you can end up being bust up quite a bit. So I use the end of spools for this sort of thing. So I've taken off a little bit of the, um, the tippet that I had left. And before I lay it onto the hook, I'm simply going to... Off camera, obviously, bite down a bit on the tippet just to, to make it a bit crinkly. Then I'm going to quickly bring my thread up to the top end and catch in. The tippet material. Now, uh, whether fluorocarbon or copolymer, I don't, I don't think it makes much difference. It's just a rib. So I've caught that in. And the next thing I'm going to do is add my dubbing. Now, people use different dubbins, fiery brown, red. I use a combination of uh, dubbins that I just mix together. There's a bit of everything in here. You might even see a glint of purple in there somewhere. But it's my, this is what I use for my Midas. So I'm just going to take a clump of that. And I am going to try and dub it on to the thread as hard as I can. So some dubbins, like the scruffy dubbin, it doesn't take any effort at all really to to get it onto thread, but some other dubbins like this mix that I've made here can be a bit of a hassle. So you've really got to work it with your thumb and forefinger. But I've got that on. I can add some more later if I need to. And I'm simply going to bring my dubbin up shank of the hook. Try and keep the, the body even and I've just caught the point of the hook there which ripped into the dubbin so I'm just going to tighten that all up again and I'm going to bring it up to there. Then I'm just going to remove the excess dubbin that I have here like so. Okay that looks okay. So next in the opposite direction I'm going to bring up my rib just bear with me nice open turns they're just shy of an eighth of an inch apart up to where I've finished my body and I'm going to catch that in with a couple of turns like so before I go any further, I'm just going to add a little bit more wax to my thread and then I can catch that in properly. Remove it with the scissors. Now, the legs on this fly is a pheasant tail and it's done in a, a different way actually, quite quite an inventive way. I don't know what Paul was thinking but um, 
it does work really well, uh, which I was quite surprised when I first learned how to tie this fly. I thought, oh, that's not the way I would tie the legs, but what do I know? So I've already separated uh, four strands on either side here, just so that I'm not picking away at this for ages, trying to get the strands in. So it's four fibres from the pheasant tail. I'm going to do your side first. So I'm going to line that up and it's going to come about two eighths of an inch past the bend of the hook. I'm just going to hold that in place and I'm not lashing down tightly here, just pinching loops. You don't want this moving round, you want it to stay along the side here. So I'll come back to my pheasant tail, already counted out my four fibres here and I've taken the next four strands and on my side now I can add that in and I want it the same length as the strands on the other side. So I can come over again just loose loosely to hold the legs in place and once I've got them sitting where I want them and they're not quite right yet there we go I'll be able to clamp down on this properly so I've got one stray one there but I'm not going to worry about it I mean when you see this fly finished you'll just think it's an abomination because yeah, I certainly did but my goodness it doesn't half work or I wouldn't be tying it so that's me got my legs where I want them the next thing to do then is about the same amount of material that we use for the body we're going to need for the thorax so it's quite quite a lot of material actually but we're going to build it up so I'll try and get it dubbed on nice and tight not overly as worried about the, the thorax area as I was about the the body so I've got that like so and then we bring up our dubbing over the top and I'm going to try and leave plenty of room at the front here so I'm going to come back and then I can see I'm near the end of my dubbing now. You'll notice that there's hardly any left. So the last three turns, I want my thread to end up at the front of the fly. So I'm going to come through my thorax with my thread, pull everything back and catch that in there like so. Now that's looking not too bad now. Uh, you might think different, but I'm fairly happy with that. So next is the hackle. And I'm just going to use an old cape I've got here. And I've already pre-selected a feather. And I have trimmed away the edges. And I just need to add a little bit of wax to my thread before catching that in. So, easy enough. Pull everything back. And then I hope you can see, I'm trying to keep my fingers out of the way as much as I can and just catch that hackle in then with my hackle pliers I can grab the tip of the feather and it doesn't really matter I mean I don't I don't bother about oh it's three turns it's four turns just how, however many turns takes my fancy to be honest uh, once once you see the finished fly you'll understand why I'm not being so particular about it needs this and it needs that. But there we go. So I think I've got three or four turns in there. I'm going to bring my thread, sorry, my feather up. I'm going to catch that in with my thread. A couple of turns. Bring the whole thing back. Sorry, the pliers I've got in the way there. everything back out the way 
and then I can lock that into place and then I can simply just keep tension on the thread, pull that away. Okay, so that's that's coming on a treat. I'm fairly happy with that. And to finish off, uh, I don't know what Paul used, um, but there's a little bit of gold at the front of this fly, hence the name Midas. Now I'm using Angel here. I haven't got the packet, but this is this is the stuff I'm using, and you don't need very much. Tiny little bit, just to finish the fly off, and then that just dubs on to your thread, like so. Now it's particularly effective on stocky rainbows. I don't know why, um, why it would be any more effective than a hopper. It's maybe a confidence thing, but um, it does do a great job. So I'm bringing my gold in now at the head and I'm going to finish that off get that excess angel hair out of the way then I can simply build up a little head and as usual I'm going to add a little bit of UV resin I got away with that there, I don't know if you noticed, but the thread came bundling off the head, so I'm going to have to rework that. But uh, I got off lightly. Sometimes that can be the kiss of death. And your fly all comes undone. But I've been lucky on this occasion. So I'll just take that away. Come in with my UV pen. And essentially that's the fly finished, but, um, and it looks awful, I know. <laughs> I mean, I, I can hardly believe it myself. I look at this fly and think, why on earth would you tie these? But I've got loads in my boxes now in size 10 through to 14s because they've just work. Now, before you finish, get your dubbing brush and get right in. Don't worry about the legs. Don't worry about the wing or the thorax, in fact, don't worry about anything. Just get in there and give it a right good scrub. And the scruffier the better. And I know it looks like a hot mess, but that is as, as nice as I like them. So you can see it is, it's just a mess, but trout just love it. Now before I, I, I finish, I just want to show you one last tip. So that's me roughed up the fly and essentially it's finished. But what I do is I add some of this stuff and it's like uh, it's like uh, permafloat or muslin dry fly silicon is what this is. But you get permafloat does the job. And what I'll do is just really give the fly a good soaking in this. And it makes it look even worse than it did before it was wet. Um, but I'll put that to the side and let it dry. And then once once it's dry, it goes into my fly box. When you're actually fishing with it, all you need is a little bit of gink or uh, up high and dry. And, and it'll float all day for you like a cork. It looks terrible. I know that. But um, please trust me when I tell you. If you're serious about dry fly fishing, you need to have these in your box. Thanks very much for watching. If you're enjoying what I'm doing, please don't forget to subscribe and I'll see you next time. That's how to do it.